What's up guys, Andre here, and today I want to take a look at a few different ways we can make use of vModel in your child components. We'll also make sure to take a look at the fine model, which is built into version 3.3 of Vue, which we are using here. So I have a basic form here that's making use of two-way data binding using vModel. Basic Vue stuff, so I have a text input here, vModel on it right here, and the state being updated is right here. Same with the checkbox. We have a vModel, newsletter is the name of the state, and as I check it, that should update it. And same with the name here. Now, if all your state lives in the same component, then you are good to go. However, if you have any sizable view application, you're usually going to extract components. And when you do, the state no longer lives in the same component. So for example, you're probably going to have multiple forms on your application. And if you do, you don't want to repeat this input code. You want to extract it to a component. Now, when you do that, this name state no longer lives in the parent. Let me show you what I mean. Let's first extract this input to a component. So let's grab this. Let's make a new component. Let's name it input text dot view. Okay, let's make a template here. Let's paste in that input code. Okay, let's save this. And we're going to remove the V model for now. But the goal is eventually to have this back in the child as well. For now, let's get rid of it. Let's accept the placeholder as a prop. So let's create a prop named placeholder. And we'll define that up here. So say script setup. Let's say const props equals define props. And we'll define a placeholder as a string. Okay. Let's save this and make use of this in the parent. So back to our parent component. Let's comment this out. Let's make use of that new component. So input text. I'm going to hit tab here so it imports automatically. We have a placeholder prop. Let's say name. And we want the V model to be on here because our state that we want to change is right here. So we'll say V model equals name in this case. Okay. Now, if I save this, you'll see that the text box does render correctly. However, we've lost reactivity here. So this doesn't work. So how can we bring this reactivity back? So back to our child component. Again, the goal is eventually to use V model in here as well. But for now, it's sort of just implement V model ourselves. So it's a bit different depending on the form field, but for input boxes, first we bind the value and we have to grab this from the parent. So in this case, we're not passing a prop here, but since we're using V model, we actually are. You can actually give the prop a name if you like, and the syntax for that would be V model colon name of prop here. But if you don't give it a name, it has a default name and that default name is model value. So we'll stick to that back to our child. We can accept that prop up here. Again, it's named model value like this. And how about we say required true? It's a type string and required true. Okay. So this model value should have the value of whatever is in the text box, or at least initially whatever is in the text box. So we can say model value within here. And let me save that. And you can see it's empty here, but to prove that the prop is actually working, let's change the default value of the name to my name here. So again, if I save this, you'll see that it does appear here. And that's because when we use vModel, a prop is actually being passed to this component. In this case, the name of it is model value. And then we are setting the value here, but we still don't have reactivity here. So if I try to type something here, you'll see it doesn't change. So to bring that reactivity back, we have to listen for the input event. And this is slightly different depending on the form element, but for a text box, it should be input. So whenever the user types, what do we want to do? Now, if the state lived in this component, we can just update the state directly, but it does not. It lives in the parent component. So what we can do is emit an event and we can do that directly within the template using dollar sign emit. And then the name of the event, we have to give it this convention. So we have to say update and then the name of the prop we want to update. So in this case, the model value. And if we name it like this, the V model in the parent should work. Then we want to pass through the data. So in this case, whatever the user typed. So event.target.value should work. So again, props down from the parent, we're receiving the initial value of the name and then events up. So as the user types in, we're emitting an event to the parent. And now if I save this, our reactivity should be back. So now if I type here, it does work. Okay, great. 
This is sort of the manual way of doing things and has the least amount of magic. Let's do the same for our checkbox, just so you can see how that works as well. So let me just grab all of this. Let's make a new component named input checkbox dot view. Let's paste that in. We no longer need the placeholder. We can keep the model value, but now it's going to be of type of Boolean. So let's change that. And this template is going to be the checkbox code. So let's get rid of this back to our parent. Let's grab the checkbox code. So all of this, let me copy that, comment that out. Let's go back to our input checkbox. Let's paste that in, save that. And again, we sort of want to do the same thing we did in our input box here. So let's get rid of the V model. Again, we want to bring this back eventually, but for now let's do the same thing. So we want a value, but in the case of a checkbox, we just want to set if it's checked or not. So instead of value, it's going to be checked. And that's going to be the prop coming in. So our model value. And now when the user checks the checkbox, we want to emit an event to the parent. So again, almost the same as what we have here. So let me just grab this, but the event is going to be change. Okay. The name of the event is update model value, but now instead of event target value, let's just say event target checked. Okay. Now, if I save this, let's save our app as well. Actually, we have to make use of it in here. Let's say input checkbox. Okay. That should have imported doesn't take any props by default. Actually, it takes the V model. So say V model equals newsletter, just like you have here. And let's see if this works as well. So by default, it's false. If I check it, it does update here. Okay, cool. Let's go back to our input text here. And let's see if we can actually make use of V model. So again, instead of this, I want to make use of V model instead. So there are a few ways to do this. First, let's take a look at using writable computed. So we're going to be using a computed property, but that computed property is also writable, which is a pretty rare use case. If you take a look at the documentation here, you can see the syntax for that. So we're going to have a getter and a setter. And again, this is a pretty rare use case, and I've only used it for this situation here where we want to use V model in our child components. So let me just show you how it works. Let's grab this entire computed or this entire thing here. And let's go back to our app here. And let's go into our input text. And let me just comment this out so you have it here for reference. And let's duplicate it down here. And let's uncomment this one actually. Okay. So now we're going to get rid of our implementation of V model. But now we'll actually make use of V model using a writable computed. So let's get rid of this. Let's say V model equals. And let's name that writable computed proxy value. Doesn't matter what you name it as long as you set the variable for our computed. So I'm going to put that up here. So after our props, it's based in that writable computed. And our name is proxy value. Okay. And for our getter, it's basically going to be what we have here to set the input box initially. And for our setter, it's basically what we have here whenever the value is updated. So let's start with the getter. So again, it's basically just this, we just want to return the model value. So we'll do just that. So let's say return props dot model value. Okay. And for the setter, we want to do what we have here. So emit an event. So let me just grab this actually. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this and let's paste that in. Now, if you want to emit within your script, you have to make use of define emits. So let me get rid of this. Let's say emit the event name is the same. So update model value is fine. But now we don't have to use event target value because the updated value is coming in from this new value param. So let's get rid of this. Let's say new value. Okay. And we have to make use of define emits up here. So right here, let's say const emit equals define emits. And let's just use the array syntax here. So update model value. Okay. Now, if I did this correctly, our text input should still work. It should still be reactive, but now we are making use of V model here. So let's save that. And that's not working because I have to import computed. So let's import computed from view. Let me just try to do it here. Okay. Save that. Okay. And hopefully this should work now. And it does. Cool. 
So again, we're making use of writable computed, which has a getter and a setter. And now we can make use of vModel instead of our manual implementation of vModel down here. So let's do the same thing for our checkbox. So let's grab this vModel. Let's comment this out or duplicate it first. Let's comment this one out. Let's get rid of our manual implementation of vModel here. Okay. Let's grab our writable computer here. Let's grab this. Let's paste it up here. Let's make sure to import computed from view. And this actually stays the same. The getter is the same and the setter is the same as well. And now we just need our define emits. So let's grab that as well. And that is the same as well. So let's put that right here. And hopefully our checkbox works as well. So let me save. Again, now we're making use of vModel and writable computed. Let me just make sure it works. And it does. Cool. So as I mentioned, we do have some repeated code here. That's exactly the same. We have this proxy value, which is the same for our checkbox and our input text. And it's going to be the same for any form field you use a writable computed on. So it makes sense to extract this logic somewhere else so you can reuse it and reduce the duplication. So you can actually extract this logic to a composable and you can do it manually, but I'm going to make use of the popular view use library right here, which has a built-in composable for this exactly. So let me install this. Let's stop feet. Let's install view use. Okay, let's rerun Vite. And let's take a look at that composable, which does this basically. It's called use vModel. So let's search for that right here, not to be confused with use vModels. And if you take a look at the source, so somewhere down here is the source right here. Let's just open that up here. And it's making use of TypeScript, so it does have a bunch of types and it does accommodate for other use cases. But if I scroll all the way down here, you should see our writable computed or something similar. And you can see it right here. So we have our computed, we have our getter and we have our setter. So with that knowledge, we can actually replace our writable computed with this built-in composable from view use. So this is how you use it right here. Let's import it first. Let's start with our text box. Let's import it up here and let's grab this right here. So this line of code will basically replace our writable computed. So instead of this, we'll make use of this. So let me just comment this out. We'll name it the same. So proxy value. We'll make use of use v model, which comes from the library. We have to pass it our props, which we have up here. We have to pass it the name of the prop. So in this case, it's model value. And then we have to pass in the emits. So in this case, we have emit here, which is using define emits. And if we do that, it should still work the same. Again, we're using this proxy value down here as a V model. And let's save that. Let's go back to our app. Let's refresh just in case. And let's see if this still works. And it does. Cool. And now we've reduced our writable computed to one line of code. So let's do the same for our checkbox. Let's make sure to import use v model up here. Let's get rid of this or comment it out at least. And let's grab our use v model call. Okay, let's replace that. Again, we're still making use of proxy value within here. But now we've replaced our writable computed with this one line. Save that. Checkbox still works. And now our code is a bit shorter. Now we can make this even shorter using the fine model, which is currently experimental in view version 3.3. So there's actually an RFC for it for discussion. If you go to this URL, which I'll leave a link to. And it's basically this, but even shorter. So let's see how we can turn it on for view 3.3. And let me just show you that I am using view 3.3 here, which was released about a month ago at the time of this recording. And if I scroll down here, there should be instructions on how to turn it on. So right here in your Vite config, just turn on 
the find model. So let me just grab this entire plugins array. Let's go to our Vite config. Let's replace it here. Okay. So the find model is true. Let's save that. And now to use it, let's go back to our input text. Again, it's just a shorter version of this right here. So again, I'm going to comment this out. Let's duplicate that. And instead of use V model, we can say define model. Define model. We don't need to pass in the props since Vue knows about that already. We don't need to pass in the emit. And we just have to give it the name of the prop that we want to update. So in this case, model value. And I actually think we don't even need to accept the props when we do it this way. So we can actually comment this out as well. Save that. Back to our app. Let's refresh just in case and let's see if it still works. It does. And I think if you're using model value as the prop name, you don't even need to pass that in. So we can get rid of this. Save that. And it should still work. It does. Cool. Let's do the same for our checkbox to double check. Let's get rid of our props here. Or at least comment it out. Let's duplicate this. Let's comment this out. Let's say define model. And that should still work. Let's refresh just in case. And it does still work. But now we're making use of define model in view 3.3. So there you have it. I've shown you four ways you can make use of V model within your child components. So again, as a review, we can either do it manually. So set the value and then emit events to the parent. We can make use of writable computed and then make use of V model on the component like we're doing here. Writable computed here. We can extract this repeated code to a composable, which is what view use is making use of when we make use of use v model, or if you're using view 3.3, you can just make use of define model. So the choice is up to you, kind of just depends on your personal preference. I initially did things manually, like I showed you down here. And then I discovered writable computed, and I started doing it that way, using this. And then I discovered the composable within view use. And that's what I'm currently using in my projects. And if a future version of Vue decides to accept this RFC for the find model, then I'm definitely going to make use of the find model instead.